Hey guys, how you guys doing? Welcome back to the channel. Thanks for taking the time out of your day to watch this video that I made for you. Before we start today's video, please hit the thumbs up button, the subscribe button, and that notification button. Today we're going to talk about five must use apps when transitioning from Windows to Linux. Welcome back, Teal Tears. If you're new to Linux and this operating system is something new to you that you've never experienced before, well, you know, fear not. We got we kind of are going to guide you through some apps that you're going to absolutely going to need when you first make that conversion. You might be wondering which apps are the most essential for a smooth transition from Windows. Well, you just might want to try the ones I'm going to talk about in this video. So let's introduce you to the five must use apps that I think are ones that you guys should use. First up, we're going to talk about an office suite. Now I know I've gone on record many a time saying that office suites should be left out by the distributions. And it's simply because I believe that those should be left up to the in, the user to install. So you can fire up your add or remove software icon, which most distributions have that, or use your command line to install it and select a office suite of choice. Not everybody needs it, but if you're a student or you use it for work, then this will make your transition a little bit easier. There are a few out there that you could use. One that I understand it's very customizable for the use for, for Linux uh, is uh, WPS. You can customize it and make it look and feel a lot like Microsoft Windows. There's also LibreOffice. Both of these are very powerful office suites that include you know word processing, spreadsheet software, presentation creators, and a little bit more. Um, it's a great alternative to Microsoft Office. Another one that you could consider doing is using your Microsoft Office 365 online. That's usually a little bit more easier to do, a little easier to use. It's also Microsoft Office full blown, so it integrates really well with your workflow, whether it be student or or uh, business. Uh, that's the only thing I could tell you to do. Second, let's go ahead and talk about GIMP. It is a free and open source image editing uh, software. It's perfect for graphic design and photo manipulation. With its extensive features and user-friendly interface, you'll be creating stunning pieces of artwork and graphics in no time at all. Uh, I, I use it every day for making thumbnails for my videos. If you're not sure how to use it, there's a multitude of videos out there on YouTube, which is where I've gone to learn what I've learned. Also, um, I have the benefit of having a great friend who has a YouTube channel by the name of Zany, and uh, he knows how to use uh, GIMP very well along with Blender. And so I sat down and he ran me through a pretty quick rundown with it as well. So there's lots of good tools and assets out there that you can approach to learning how to use it. It's definitely a must use. Also, if you'd like me to do a general overview video of it, which is literally going to be that a general overview video of it, because I am still learning it as well. I just comment down below uh, that request in the comment section, and I'll see about doing that. Just kind of giving you an overview. And from what I'm told and from what I understand, I've never used Adobe Photoshop, but if you understand where the tools are in GIMP and how they've laid it out for you to select between the tools, it'll make a huge night and day difference, very much like you would in uh, Adobe Photoshop. So it might bring some familiarity for you. Now, thirdly, let's move on to Firefox. That's right. The web browser is one of the most important things that everybody uses. This web browser is known for its speed, security, and privacy features, although its speed has declined over time a little bit. Uh, that is a make it or break it deal that you can't use it. It's very well known and it's very it's very well known and it is cross platform. So the chances are you've probably already used it in your time with Windows. It's a fantastic alternative to Internet Explorer or Microsoft Edge. Which Edge being a Chromium based, I'm also going to give you a couple of other ones that you could possibly consider uh, and will ensure a smooth browsing experience. That's um, Vivaldi and Brave. Both of them are Chromium based and they work quite well i recently switched from brave to vivaldi if you are looking for a very security centric type browser both of them are great brave as well but it's got the the tokens the bat tokens which are the crypto stuff built into it um i do like the home page it gives you how many you know trackers and bugs it stopped that kind of stuff 
But either way, you can give either one of these a try, and you will have a great experience with any of these. I promise you that. Fourth, let's talk about music. If you're a music lover, you definitely want to check out Rhythmbox. Now, I like Rhythmbox, and I also like Amrock. Those are both really, really good ones. Uh, these music players allow you to organize and play your favorite tunes with a sleek interface, easy-to-use controls, and I guarantee you'll be grooving to some pretty badass tunes pretty quick. If you have an extensive music collection, uh, they will import, give you all your meta tags, all that good stuff, you know, album arts, all that stuff will import it, and you have it just like any other standard music player out there. That is not something that is left out in Linux. They are not the only two out there. There's many more out there as well. You've got uh, Lollipop. Uh, I think it's Clementine. You have quite a few other ones out there. So many. But those two are the two that I've used the most and I found have a much easier time using with much smoother control and playback as well. So if you're an audiophile and you like listening to music on there, you can certainly check those out and you're not going to have a bad time either. And fifth, last but not least, we're going to talk about Vert Manager. Why is Vert Manager a tool that you should learn as a new to Linux user? Well, this is a virtualization, virtualization software. And what that means inherently is, is it allows you to put a running computer inside a computer your operating system, it's virtualized. And there are a couple out there. There's uh, Vert Manager, there's also GNOME Boxes, which uses the Vert Manager. And then there's VirtualBox. Sorry, there's Vert Manager, GNOME Boxes, and VirtualBox. GNOME Boxes is a different front-end GUI for QEMU slash KVM, or which is what Vert Manager is. It's also a front-end GUI for it. It uses the native Linux kernel to use those. That's why I would recommend either GNOME Boxes or Vert Manager far more sooner than I would VirtualBox because VirtualBox doesn't use the natural native kernel, which using this distribution or the, using this virtualization method actually allows your Linux distribution and its plethora of drivers and optimizations to pass through to the VirtualBox. So you get a much more seamless native experience in running it. Within this virtual manager or virtual bot or virtual uh, uh, known boxes um, and virtualization machine, you can actually run Windows distribution uh, uh, OS OS in there. Actually, um, you can boot into and I download the ISO, boot into it, and install Windows into that virtual machine. And you could use that virtual machine to run any programs that are not compatible with Linux or have a cross platform that's Alter, or alternate that works with Linux as well. That can be a problem, and that is something that that's why I think this is absolutely important for you guys to use because it helps you bridge that gap in between leaving Linux or Windows and moving to Linux to where you can seamlessly integrate until you can find a suitable alternative or get comfortable with a suitable alternative to make use of it in your everyday use of. Windows. So if there's one program out there or two programs, maybe even three that you absolutely just cannot get away from in a Windows world, but it isn't something that's going to stop you from leaving to come to Linux, then you might want to use that. And that's why I want to say that's the fifth application to use in Linux when you're migrating over from Windows is learning how to do the virtualization machine so that that way you can bridge that gap and move away from Windows officially. Uh, it's it's just a no-brainer to do it that way so that that way you can still feel right at home and you actually have a way of maybe advancing the inevitable that you're going to switch to. Because I promise you, once you start using Linux fully, you will wind up using less and less out of Windows. That's what happened to me. I ran a business on Windows for many years and I left it cold turkey to Linux because I had to and uh, I don't regret it ever. I have not looked back. I've been almost 30 years now using Linux. It's insane. It's like 25, 26 years. It's, it's insane. But either way, that is 
everything I needed to tell you on the five must use apps in a nutshell. I hope you found this video very helpful and that these apps help enhance your Linux experience. If you have any questions or suggestions, feel free to leave, leave them in the comments down below. Also, a reminder, hit the thumbs up, the subscribe button, and the notification button. And if you like these kind of videos and you like the content I'm putting out, why not join the channel? Help support the channel. Y'all keep doing what you do. Keep on Linux and stay blessed, stay safe, and I will see you in the very next one. Got some people to thank, and here they are.